Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Oh, we had to get round to it at some stage. We had to get round to the Tier 10 Italian TD, the Minotauro. Well, what can I say about this one? Oh, videos have gone out on it already by most of the YouTubers, and I've left this one until the end, really. Why is that? Well... Because what's the point of competing with all the other YouTubers? And I want to give you more of an objective view to this little tank, although it's not so little. Now, the thing is, this one was super hyped up. I'm not going to lie. Um, it, it did have a lot of hype surrounding it before the tank was released. It went into test. I was one of those lucky people who got the pearls on it to test it. And a lot of the videos prior to the release of this tank was based on its test statistics. Now, a couple of things about test tanks, guys. Test tanks are purposely, generally, OP. Okay, They're slightly broken. There is a reason for that. The reason is they, they want to find out what is actually needed to balance the tank. So they give it better statistics. You roll out in it. You give it a good brush. You, you, you sort of play it aggressively. You play it this way. You play it that way. You do what you can. And then everybody writes a big report and says, look, it's broken on this, it needs a bit, a bit here, it needs a bit there, it needs to tinker here, to try and get the tank balanced. And when you get leak videos, the hype videos before the tanks are released, they are generally based on those statistics. And this is the thing, the tanks will change, and they change drastically prior to their release. And I always try to tell players to be cautious, don't base everything on what you hear in these leak videos prior to the release of the vehicle. Because you, you'll just be disappointed, I, I can assure you of that. And already I've seen videos out there entitled the Minotauro, the biggest disappointment, the Minotauro, it, it's terribly terrible and blah blah blah. And is it? Well that's why we're here. We're here to have a look at this tank in a little bit more depth. I'm going to do the normal thing. That's the tank and overview. We're now going to look at its stats. We're then going to look at the equipment loadout that I'm using on this tank, look at the provisions, look at the consumables, and then we will jump into a couple of games. So let's have a look at the stats. Okay, unlike some of the other Italian tanks, this little beastie only comes with one gun, and it is an auto reloader. It doesn't come with a single shot, unlike the tier 8, tier 7, tier 6, and tier 5. It's like the tier 9, it's only auto reloader. What about this tank, though? Well, let's have a look at it. Firstly, its hit points. It's got 1,900. We'll get to the ammo pro, uh, sorry, the um, armor profile shortly. But this has only got 1,900. Don't forget, it is a TD. So it's, it's not going to have the best amount of hit points. Look at its armor. On the front, both the turret and the hull, 240 and 270, respectively. That's pretty stonking. However, the sides and the rear, like all the other Italian TDs, are pretty shabby. Not much going on there. Moving down, view range, wow, 264. Again, it is a TD. And you have to remember, guys, a lot of these, these aren't the standards because I've got all the equipment loaded. So you have to take that into account. But, you know, it's got 264 view range. Concealment, it's not the best. 42%, that is with, by the way, camouflage paint, and a camo net so we'll get into that sh shortly but it's not the best camo profile 33 while moving and 9 while stationary exactly the same as what we saw with the cc1 mark 2 dpm oh it's a shocker 1879 dpm i mean that's pretty bad and you can start to see why it's pretty bad with a 21 second reload of shell number one a 9.75 second reload with shell number two and an 8.8 .8 reload with shell number three admittedly those those are much better than the tier nine that we saw in the last video the art they, they're considerably better so it's not as tricky funnily enough as the tier nine counterpart but it's still a tricky tank Average penetration, 275 on its AP, 340 on its heat, and 65 on its HE. Damage, well, you're knocking out 490 on its AP, 
410 on its heat and 630 on its HE. Again, that is pretty similar to what you are getting with the tier nine. Aim time, vastly improved over the tier nine, but again, remember I've got different crews, etc., etc. 4.4. Dispersion, 0 0.351. It's not the most accurate of tanks. And it's got lower gun depression than the tier nine CC1 Mark II. It's only got 10 degrees gun depression compared to the 13 degrees of the tier nine. Gun the gun turn limit, pretty much the same, 45 degrees left and right. Maneuverability, again, pretty much the same, 34 top speed, but you're gonna average out at 26. Crossing ability, well, it's not the best. 84% on the road, 68% on the ground, and 54% in the water. But let's have a look at the equipment. So this is what I'm running it with at the moment. I have got improved ventilation. That makes everything better. It gives me a better view range, gives me better DPM, gives me better auto load times, gives me a better aim time, etc., etc. Now look, I could use calibrated shells, but it's only giving me an extra 14 millimeters of penetration. There is no point me running that, believe me. I would rather get that DPM increased and I'd rather get those reload times down. I'm then using normally defense system because why not? I've then got a camo net on this one. Like the tier nine, I've got camouflage paint first, that gives me 4%. Then I've got this one, the camo net, which gives me an extra 15%, giving me a total of 42%. So if I take it all away, I've actually only got 23% stationary. That is shocking. Not being funny, that's shocking. Especially when you're considering this is a TD and a lot of people are going to sit at the back. It's it's not the best. I then got the enhanced gun laying device, pretty much like the tier nine. That's going to give me an extra 0 0.5, reducing that time. If I didn't have the enhanced laying gun device, I would be close to five seconds. I then got the 4% enhanced armor because there's no point sticking the additional hit points. I only get 114. Uh, that's nothing, right? This is tier 10, okay? 114 is half, a sh it's, 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 it's not even one shell. Uh, so there's no point. I'd rather have that 4% just to give me a little bit better. Um, I haven't got the engine accelerator. I've actually got the improved control on this one, giving me a better haul turn rate. I mean, I could use the engine accelerator. What's the point? I'm only gonna get another two kilometers an hour out of it. I'd rather have the improved control allows me to have faster responses. Then using the refined gun, reducing that dispersion over 100 meters. As we know, dispersion is the reticle, how far the, sh the shell fans out over a distance. Sticking the refined gun in means the shell doesn't, takes longer to fan out. Then got the toolbox, and then I've got the high-end consumables. Talking of consumables, let's jump in. Got the standard stuff. Remember, this is an auto reloader, so it has got no adrenaline or stuff like that. It's got no super duper uh, consumables. Just got it with the multi-purpose restoration pack. I've then got the improved engine boost and I've then got track repair. So two repair kits and a boost. I don't need a fire extinguisher and I don't need the first aid kit. My multi-restoration pack is enough for that. Moving to the provisions, again, I want the crew to be at their top. So I've got the cheese head, that increases my crew, that makes them work harder. I've then got protective kit, which just protects everything. And I've then got the cinnamon roll, again, making my crew work slightly harder. Looking at the ammo, well, I've got 36 AP, 12 heat, and 6 HE. That is what I'm rolling out with. Not saying it's perfect, it's just an idea. So with that in mind, let's now go and have a look at that armor profile. Here we go. It's facing off against a Type 71, and as you can see, it's pretty, pretty red when the Type 71's got its standard armor. You can, potentially side scrape in it, you can. But whilst it looks pretty red, when I change the arm, the ammunition, it goes green. And that's the thing. People are gonna try and pen you with their Pramo and they will pen you with their Pramo. Thing is, it does have actually 10 degrees, but so it's saying seven here. So you should be looking at it more like this. You can still pen these, but uh, the armor profile isn't that bad. Now, a lot of people are complaining. They're saying, oh, it's really terrible. And I, I have to admit, this is Armor Inspector. Now, I don't know if it's 100% accurate, okay? It's just giving you an overall 
impression on what the tank can and cannot look like. I don't know if it is accurate. I don't know if they pulled it across from World of Tanks PC rather than Blitz. I've rolled out in this tank and I've been smacked around a lot frontally, not gonna lie. Uh, so be mindful of this, okay? Try and be careful on this tank. Remember, it is a haul down tank. And with any further ado, let's have a look how it actually plays in some games. So here we go in the Minotauro, rolling out on mines, a map that really is too small for a tier 10. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play it aggressively. Now, as I say in most of my videos, when I take a new tank out, I generally don't play it in supremacy, okay? There's a reason for that. Uh, I prefer to go out and encounter, although the, the next replay will be a supremacy match because I am tuning up here. Now, the thing about the Minotauro is, as I said, it had a lot of hype before it was released. Now, the thing is, I actually don't mind this tank. I think it's okay. It just takes a lot of getting used to. And you've got to be mindful that, firstly, it's a haul down beast, okay? You've got to try and be a ridgeline fighter in it. You can be aggressive, I'm aggressive now, um, and you will get those bounces and you will be able to put shots in like that. But this is mines. Mines is a, is a map, especially from this side, or this spawn, that you can do this. You can be slightly aggressive. Not every map is gonna let you do that. Think Himmelsdorf, that's never gonna let you do that. This map will. It's got good frontal armor. Yes, you will get penned when you get hit by that Pramo. He's just hit me with Hesh in that uh, FV. And he's got, that was more splash damage than anything else. But you know, it, it's okay. I'm now gonna rush as much as you can rush. The, the 45 degrees turn there, not really useful. I noticed that the FV4202 FV had dropped down. So I'm able to come up, try and pull this T95 with me to try and get him to commit. He does commit, we can take him down, there he goes. Guys, I'm not gonna be setting the world on fire in this tank. Um, I have got the ace in it, but I haven't, I haven't got the replay, unfortunately. Now we're gonna try and put some shots into them, blind shooting over there. So we've probably done about 2,000 damage. It's not a bad tank. I know a lot of people have said they've been disappointed. Now the disappointment comes from the excessively long reload, okay? When it was out in test, I can't remember it being this long, but it was always a long reload. The thing about it is, like all the tanks out there, once you get used to its weaknesses, then you can have really good fun in it, okay? It's as simple as that. But like all tanks, remember, play to its weaknesses first. If you play to its weaknesses, then you can play to the strengths. The weakness of this tank is that excessive low time. It is the DPM. So be mindful of that. Don't be in a rush to get to where you need to be. Because if you empty the clip, you are going to be mullered. Absolutely simple. We do just shy of 3K, we kill two tanks, we block 700, we get a first class for our troubles. I'm not too concerned about that. Puts a smile on my face. This was when the, this was the day they were released, by the way. So every man and his dog was playing the damn thing. But I was quite happy with that replay. I was quite happy with that game. But let's have a look at another game and let's see if we can, we're not gonna improve on it because I, I haven't got the replay of the mastery, but we're gonna see what else this tank can do. There we go, this time we're on Halas, another relatively small map for tier 10s. And we're just gonna push forward in the game, we're in encounter mode because like I said, when I'm playing a new tank, I prefer to be in encounter rather than supremacy. Yes, okay, in supremacy, you've got a higher chance of getting those mastery badges, but I'm not overly interested in that. I'm interested to see how the tank performs. And when you roll out in supremacy, sometimes you're not gonna see how the tank performs because everybody wants to cap those bases. My, my, my tune mate has rushed over and I'm gonna try and give him some support. Like I said, the camo profile on this tank isn't the best. You are gonna be spotted all over the place. So I'm sat here waiting and the object spots me, sticks one into me. The view range isn't brilliant, but it's okay. Um, the aim time, yeah, it takes a bit of getting used to. I'm not gonna fire that last shell because that would be a disaster. So I'm just gonna back away. I've been smacked for a lot of HP. And this is what I'm trying to explain to you. If they load those premium ammunition, you are gonna get smacked, guys, and you are gonna get penetrated. 
So be very, very mindful of that. E100 is going to rush my tune, mate. I can't pen him because I haven't got calibrated shells, but I can slow the heat and then I can pen him easily. Uh, also, I think, there you go, that one didn't pen, but I can still give him a hard time and I'm going to have to finish and empty the clip because my tune mate is in trouble. Knocked him down to a one shot, my tune mate will finish him off and I now need to sort of stay relatively safe, <clears throat> excuse me, whilst I reload because, yeah, that's the thing. So I'm staying relatively safe, as you do. I'm going to try and load up and then I can help my tune mate out. At the moment, I can't, but I've got a T57 Heavy pushing onto the enemy T57 Heavy. That is giving my tune mate a bit of breathing space. Now at least I've got one shell loaded, about to have two shells loaded. Now I can push. Now I can make sure that my tune mate finishes off the T57. I'm going to push onto the object. I'm going to put a shot into him if I can. Yes, I can. Then I'm going to back away. I'm going to push up again. I want to try and stop the object from shooting my tune mate. And I kind of do. Then we finish him off. So I had to empty the entire clip yet again. Now on an excessively long reload yet again. But what I'm going to try and do here, and I'm going to try and bait the yo. Don't need to. He's been taken down. What I was trying to do is bait the yo out so he would take the shot onto me, allowing my tune mate to finish him off. I've got two tanks left. One of them is a bat chat. The other one is another Minotauro, I believe. So we're going to try and take this time to move around the map as fast as we can, which isn't exactly quick in a Minotauro. Loading as we go. Hopefully by the time we get to where we need to be, we're going to be fully loaded. There's the bat chat. He pops up. Bless him. Go side on. I get a lovely engine fire and wreck him. 2,432 knocked out. I haven't bounced anything. Taking two kills. There's the Minotauro. I'm okay here. I've got a fully loaded magazine. So all is good in the world of Fujit and his Minotauro. I'm going to pop around the corner, pre-aim, and just go boom, and he's gone. Three kills, 2,560 knocked out. Again, not setting the world on fire, but doing enough, winning the game, and showing you what the tank can or cannot do. We get another first class for our troubles, and that I'm very, very happy with. Like I said, this one has had a lot of bad press recently, and it's had bad press because it's had hyped press. That is something you really need to remember. Because that's the thing. I mean, when, when a tank gets super hyped up, people then have an impression that it's going to be OP or broken or whatever. And then they roll out and they discover that it's actually not what you thought. And then they get all disappointed and then they start slating the tank. The tank itself isn't that bad. Okay, it's not the easiest tier 10 TD. Don't misunderstand me and don't get me wrong. It's certainly not an easy tank to play. It takes a little bit of getting used to. What with the aim time, it's a bit shabby on its mobility and it's shocking DPM. But once you get used to it, it's not a bad tank at all. You can have fun in it. But as I say, you know, a word of caution. Stop relying on these leak videos that show you a tank before it's even being released because they do you no good. They are just hyping something that ends up not being what you think it's going to be. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been the Minotauro, the tier 10 Italian TD. By all means, comment and like below. That's what the comment section is there for. And remember this, guys. It is only a game at the end of the day. So stay safe out there. Have fun on that battlefield and happy tanking. Because really, that's what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.